Beam creation is very similar to wall creation. It requires a longitudinal axis and two other axes to create two insertion nodes called the I and J node. The I end is the left end of the horizontal beam or bottom end of a vertical beam. J is the right end of a horizontal beam or upper end of a vertical beam. We highly recommend that you model the supporting vertical elements first, that is, column or walls, then creating beams will be very easy and error-free. Each beam must be unique between supports, that is, it should not overlap with the support. Support can be columns, walls or another primary beam. Let us now create beams. Go to View tab and click Reset. Select the 2D view to make it active. Click on the beam icon in the modeling tab and the beam properties will appear. Let us use the default beam size of 250 mm width and 500 mm depth. To insert a beam, left click on the first insertion node, which is also the column insertion node. A rubber band will appear. Click on the second node and a beam will be created. Notice that you can continue to create the beams from the previous beam continuously. Right-click to end the beam insertion after inserting the three beams as shown. To insert a group of beams, you can draw a window enclosing the insertion points. Left-click on the upper left of the window, then left-click on the lower right of the window. Beams will automatically be inserted between columns and walls. Note that beams cannot be inserted on top of walls, as the walls are self-supporting, as rigid beam are automatically created in the wall. Continue to insert these beams, as shown. All beams created are listed in the structure tree under beams folder. Check that there are a total of 17 beams. Zoom into the upper left of the model and insert a diagonal beam here. Note that we did not create the longitudinal axis for this beam. Because of this, the program automatically created this axis and name it with an alias prefix. This alias axis is a hidden axis, that is, it will not be shown in the final drawing. We will now insert a curve beam in the lower right corner of the model. Click on the curve beam insertion icon in the beam properties dialog. Click on the intersection of axes A and 3 and then intersection of axes B and 4. You define the radius of the curve by simply moving the mouse cursor and the preview of curve beam in gray will show automatically. Press F2 to define the radius of the exactly to negative 1500 millimeters and press enter a curved beam will be inserted. Note, segments nodes are automatically created. Check the structure tree that you have modeled a total of 19 beams. We will now create some secondary beams here. Deactivate the curved beam icon to change it back to straight beam. Secondary beams can easily be inserted using the smart snap points without having to create axes. Place the cursor on the edge of primary beam, not the middle. Notice that snap points on 0.25, L, 0.33, L, 0.5, L, 0.67, L, 0.75, L, will be shown when the cursor is placed on the beam. Click on 0.33, L is the start point of the secondary beam. Place the cursor on the destination beam. Notice the same smart points will appear when the mouse cursor is placed on the edge of the beam. Click on the same 0.33 L point and the secondary beam will be created. Let us create another secondary beam. Place the mouse cursor at the edge of the supporting beam, specifically on any of the smart point. Press F2 to manually input the exact distance from the start of the beam. Key in 1500 mm and press Enter. Then move the mouse cursor to the edge of the next supporting beam. Notice a perpendicular point is shown. Click on this point and the beam will be created. Check the structure tree that 21 beams have been created. Let us now explore the other parameters of the beam. Under type, there are two other options other than the default. A support band beam is a dummy beam used in flat slab system, which usually requires the model to run the FE floor analysis. It will have the same depth as the flat slab. Wall coupling beam is used effectively to combine two shear walls that are used for withstanding large lateral loads, specifically seismic loads in accordance with the selected seismic code. End release. Beam ends are fixed by default. You can apply hinges to left and or right by clicking successively on this icon.
To explore the next parameter, go to the 3D view. Recall that you can maximize the view by going to the Views tab and click Reset. Then zoom into the secondary beam in 3D view. Select this secondary beam, right-click, Properties. Go to the 3D tab. The plane fields will be populated if a plane element is created and used to adjust the beam elevation positions. Del Z, I, and J controls the elevation position of the start and end of the beam. This directly affects the analytical wireframe position of the beam. By default, delta Z equals zero means that start and end nodes coincides with the top of the story. If you key in positive value it means you are raising the node position. Try entering 1000 mm for del Z, I and click update. Examine the 3D. Conversely, if negative value is inserted, the beam node is lowered. Try entering minus 1000 mm and click update. Examine the 3D view. Be very careful when using delta Z adjustment, as the beam may be unsupported if an erroneous value is entered. For simplicity, and to avoid unsupported elements, we recommend you use the easy property of the beam instead, for small adjustment to the elevation of the beam, example less than the depth of the beam. This is because easy property does not affect the elevation of analytical wireframe. Go back to the 3D tab and enter zero values for Del Z click update. Then close the beam property. Let us now proceed to model some cantilever beams. Go to the plan view. Zoom to the upper right corner. Select axis 4, right click, offset axis, and click 2 meters away, that is 2 grid box away. Click on the beam icon. Create a beam here. Notice the red triangle will appear, which is a cantilever marking. It means the right end is the unsupported. The arrow points to the direction of support. The cantilever marking will affect the design of the beam, as well as its detailing. For example, in the design deflection check, this beam will be checked as a cantilever. In the drawings, the beam will also be detailed as cantilever. The cantilever marking can be changed if desired. With this beam selected, right-click, choose Mark Free End of Cantilever Beam. Three options are available. Both ends supports means to remove the cantilever marking. I end free will mark the left hand as cantilever, while J end free will mark the right node as cantilever. Create another cantilever beam, and then another beam joining them too. Close the beam property. You can adjust the position or eccentricity of a beam by simply selecting it and then pressing keyboard arrow keys to move in the direction you want. The step by which member is moved can be changed in the settings center. Under General, Members Section Eccentricities Step. By the default, it is 25 mm. Select this beam and use the left keyboard key so the beam right edge is aligned with the axis. Note, you can also move columns and walls this way. Let us delete the last three beams we have created. Select these beams using any method. Right-click Delete and choose to delete beams only. Delete also the newly created axis as it no longer used. Save the model.